And I'm back today with Eddie Levine from uh, Hub. What I don't know what uh, wholesale breakthrough. What's your what company? Uh, what company do you do you do you publicly talk about? I don't even know. I mean, don't all entrepreneurs have met? Many also break through hub dub. You can use whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I know. So Eddie's got many different, uh, many many different companies in the e-commerce space, and um, we're talking about a re going back to a resonate presentation you did, um, which, and I don't want to give you a big head because you went to Kansas and <laughs> nobody likes it, nobody likes Missouri. It's fine, right? It. I happen to believe that your resonate presentation is one of the like if i was to rank the gems of like five years of resonate content i put your presentation up there with one of the hidden gems i think that it's uh it's a presentation that people um it's it's a deep difficult presentation that requires you to think about product shipping inventory logistics um in a in a totally different more meaningful way but if you follow that presentation um you truly put yourself in a in a in a mindset that will increase your profitability it's almost and, it's it's almost like for business owners that don't like to do taxes or bookkeeping like it's a necessity but they don't like talking or thinking about it but, but even if you're, even if you're going to use a third party, like a company, like have a company like yours do that for them, they should still watch and understand that presentation to at least know how to manage the situation. Sure. The question I have for you is, and, and your presentation is only like a year old, but like, what what of that has changed in the last in the last year um and and you know what what should we be thinking about differently today than than when we than going back and watching the original presentation well i think two things come to mind one is when the presentation was originally done you know that was pre all of the tariffs that went into place and all the changes with all those fees, right? So right. that wasn't at the top of mind in terms of importing and getting things from China. I mean, like people do that there were certain fees revolving around certain products, but then you had this blanket effect that, that really impacted a lot more. So that, that's, that's challenging. That's something that's changed there because now you've got to make your product selection based on how much your import just duties and taxes are going to cost you and, and customs fees as opposed to just the shipping, right? And for these, for several products, it could be 25% or more. That's a big amount of money out of you know just an expense depending on what your margin is so that's right, number one right. number two is i've always talked about how you have to always be ready and uh, ready and willing to adapt and be ready, ready and willing to adapt, to adapt to change right so in my resonate presentation i was talking about how um uber freight was taking over the freight world if they would if, they, if you would because they were basically making a network of private carriers similar to how they've done on the uber for cars right and they've basically become a broker themselves to where they, they've made freight shipping much more economical. Right, and this was like kind of mind blowing for a lot of people there because they had never yeah. even heard this before. Yeah, and, and, I, expl and I explained in the, in the presentation how you could get into Amazon faster with this and it was just, it was a whole long thing. But to go on the change point, right? Um, in the last few months, Amazon has now come up with Amazon Freight, which is basically a competitor to Uber Freight. So not only is it, uh, cheaper in most cases I found, but Amazon is doing something different where they are leveraging the power of their transportation network, their equipment and their drivers to not only handle freight that's going in and out of the Amazon facility, but now they're take, they're using Amazon equipment to do your loads that don't involve Amazon. So if I want to bring in product from my distributor to me, they'll do that freight load for me and it's even cheaper than Uber. So it's it, like they're expanding into markets that they don't really even have a, have a touch point in. Yeah. I mean, it's not overly shocking and I, I don't want to start diving into all the worlds that Amazon goes into, yeah, but I, I think the, yeah. the point you're ultimately trying to make here is that the world of transportation, one that you live in on a daily basis is constantly changing and evolving. And the tactic that you use to get your product from A to B um, a year ago or five years ago might be different today. What, what other tactics, um, do, what tactics from, that you've used for the last 
number of years still work? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, above all, I would say having your pro having internal processes and working on process improvement, right? So I started my business in 2012, and fast forwarding to 2020, having that process that you have or that a process in place for everything that you do as a business, and having it well either documented on text or documented on video or some kind right. of instructional thing to, to to make your life easier when you have to delegate worked back then and it continues to work today and it's one of the biggest things that i utilize in my business and it's one of the biggest things that's helped me grow because as your business expands and as you continue to evolve year over year, over year you're going to have to delegate and if you have to constantly spend time training people on to do to on how to do your methods it's just going to slow you down yeah you're you're a really big process oriented guy i'm curious hindsight 2020 right what what have what have you what do you know today that you kind of wish you knew back when you got started uh, for somebody who's kind of up and coming who's not you know uh, as large of a seller as you are what what is something that like you can take from what you know today and help somebody who's kind of up and coming yeah so the biggest thing i would say with that is you cannot sweat the small stuff in an e-commerce slash amazon type business and that's specifically because when you look at Amazon, they their world revolves around the customer, right? So if Amazon is core, if Amazon's core concerns the customer, and you're fighting tooth and nail about every little thing that impacts your business potentially based on what they're doing or what's happening based on within your e-commerce business, it's it's not it's not worth your time, right? You're going to spend more time than it's worth financially arguing over the little things. So when I have someone that doesn't that doesn't potentially go my way or that I don't agree with, I have to kind of assess and put a dollar value on that and, and figure out, hey, is it worth my time to potentially fight this out? Because ultimately, especially if it's an issue that involves Amazon directly, am I likely to get the resolution that I'm looking for? I might not agree with it, but if I'm gonna fight for days or weeks on end and it's not gonna go my way in general, it's it's almost like how much how much money did I waste fighting that and spending my time on it? You know what I'm saying? So, so focus on, the, the stuff that's more pertinent, the stuff that really makes an impact versus just every little bit that you don't agree with. Do you think sellers in general overanalyze and freak out too much? Yeah. <laughs> um, case in point, yesterday when Amazon said, hey, we're releasing your public information about your company and everyone is flipping out. <laughs> I, I seem to say, I mean, for for us that have been in the space for a long period of time, we can we probably should have chronicled this along the way, right? Like yeah. this happened back in 2016 when they started telling us that we couldn't incentivize reviews, and it happened when they told us that we only should be sending one email, not multiple emails. It happened when they told us that we couldn't automate processes to open up tickets for reimbursements, and you know. It, but, but, it but, constantly, it, it seems like anytime Amazon releases news that makes you, your business or your process have to change a little bit, everybody just wants to freak out. And I, and, and, and I don't believe that's what the strong sellers do. I don't believe strong sellers freak out. I believe strong sellers just drive forward. They do. And to your point, I would say, in, in all the things that Amazon has changed, announced, implemented, changed the rules, guidelines, whatever, uh, if you're being honest, how many times could can you say that you know they've made a change and you've been able to been able to actually say, hey, that really surprised me or that was completely unexpected? I mean, I would I would argue to say that you, you may not like the change, but if you really deep dive deep into the Amazon process and what's happened potentially on the other side, the other the other Amazon marketplaces throughout the world or what kind of how they've been treating sellers or, or what kind of been, has been just happening down the pipeline until they made it official. Um, can you really say that you're surprised with a lot of the things that they've decided? I mean, a lot of the changes they made, it, it, they don't. No, they're them. logical. They're, they're, oh, yeah. I guess. And even more so if you look at the change when it's occur when it occurs and you roll it back, you can say, ah, oh, I should have seen this coming because you'll be able to find the, the, the post along the way that led to that. Even if you didn't see it as those posts were planted, you didn't see that the fence was being built, right? Right. So right. what's the, um, um, 
what's the the one thing that if I'm a seller and I need to stop doing it, what's the one thing that like seller you you constantly you you talk to a lot of sellers, you you attend a lot of shows. What's the one thing that you see people constantly doing that you're like, God, you really, it's just, it's 2020. You got to stop doing this. So I'm going to kind of uh, echo my previous point because I, can, I think the two kind of go together. When I said it's important to have processes in your business, it's also important to tell yourself literally from day one that you're not going to be able to handle everything and just stop trying to do everything. I think those two things work really well together. And, and here, here's my point to this is it's not, it's not a question of just telling yourself, Hey, I can't do it all. And I'm going to, you know, try to outsource it or, or hire people to do it. And it, there's more to it than that because you've got to actually hear it in here, but then you've also almost got to hear yourself actually say it, because here's what I've noticed in talking with a lot of people in this community at conferences, trade shows, wherever I noticed that like in my head, I'm thinking about what I have to do. But then when someone asks me for advice and I give them that, when I tell them that advice, a lot of times while I'm talking, I'm also thinking in my head, wow, I just heard myself say that. So now like, am I doing that myself? Like I'm right. giving good advice, but maybe I can like use my own advice. Does that, does that make sense? Like, right. it's almost yeah, like no, you, absolutely. you hear a different, a lot, you hear a different voice. A lot, of, you say um, a lot of, a lot of the, the speakers in this space have, you know, it's easier to teach than it is to do. Right. Um, and so it's almost like, make sure you're actually doing it, not just telling people to do it. Right. I mean, and, and it's, I'm not saying that like I'm doing, I'm, I'm saying one thing and doing another. I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm doing what I'm saying, if you will, but like, can I do it better is what is my point. Yeah. So, so, so one concept that we've talked about at resonate over a number of years um, has been this idea that if you want to be a, a million dollar company, a $5 million company, a hundred thousand dollar company that you don't act like your business today, you act like you want your business to be tomorrow. How do you put that type of practice in place and in, in how you do your goal setting and your planning and, and, you know, the growth and, and, and driving the growth of your, of your business? Well, I mean, speaking about growth specifically, I mean, growth is the, the fundamental element to getting a business going and, and, and healthy long-term, right? I think too many sellers will get into this cycle where they get comfortable with a certain business model or a process or a, a group of clients or brands or products that they're working with, whatever your model is, right? They'll get really comfortable with what they're doing and, they're, and they'll say to themselves, hey, I'm making a healthy income, I'm profitable, this life is good, right? But they, the, the, the true fact in business is that nothing lasts forever. No, no, no relationships last forever, most likely. No, no products last forever, most likely. No processes last forever, most likely. So you've always got to be finding the next thing that your business is going to do to make additional revenue, additional profits. And those things that you do might not be profitable out of the gate. Heck, they might not even work long term, but you've got to try them because the more things you try, the more things you try to implement and, and add to your business, the better off and the more stable you're going to be long term. Yeah, I, you know, you're an interesting person to speak to um, in the fact that like you're an eight-figure Amazon seller. You run a you run a, a very large operation, um, and you're also kind of like this kind of I call you like the wizard of importing and inventory. Like you're like my go-to, right? Whenever I have questions, since you spoke about inventory and and um, transportation at at Resonate, I'd be curious to know like predictions for the future. Um, you know, where do you see, where, where do you see this going in terms of, you know, what, we, what we might be talking about years from now? Do you see it moving uh, people sourcing out of China? Do you see fees continuing to go up? Do you, you know, how, how do you kind of predict or, or what do you kind of predict is like the future for um, e-commerce around transportation logistics and, and uh, bringing our products over from, from wherever we manufacture them. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the best way to look at this is you look at the COVID situation, which started in March. So now we're on month, what, five and look how it's impacted a company like Amazon. It's, it's been five months since this whole process started, since the majority of the country, you know, started to go on this lockdown thing, which has since been, you know, for the most part lifted. And then now there's these resurgent, these resurgent cases. And again, but 
look at a company like Amazon and how they have struggled to adapt to the change in e-commerce, to the growth in e-commerce over the last five months. And to this day, they're still getting back to normal. I mean, I haven't had a prime one day delivery in, in months. And right. It's been two, three days. I mean, that, so if a company like Amazon is having that, I mean, for lack of a better term, is having that much of a, having that much trouble, you know, getting back on top of where prime is supposed to be and how they're supposed to operate. Think about how that's going to change e-commerce in the years moving forward. I think, personally, I think what's going to happen is this whole COVID situation, yes, there's the, there's the immediate impact of people, more people shopping online and they don't want to go to stores because they're closed or they don't feel safe, whatever, fine. But I think long term, it's what this is doing is this is training people to find more and more goods and shop more and more online because it's simplistic, it's safer, it's faster, potentially. Um, so what I think is going to happen is even if you fast forward, hopefully in the next few months, but hope, let's just fast forward to whenever the COVID situation is done. I feel like this entire situation that we've gone through is setting the e-commerce marketplace and the e-commerce business itself up for some just unbelievable long-term success and growth. Um, so it, it's just, it's a weird dynamic to say that, hey, we're going to, you know, do so well based on this whole situation that's evolved and has hurt a lot of people. But the truth is that that's the truth. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I think the 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 challenge of it is is like, how do you look at a twenty year old industry and say that we're still at the infancy? Yeah, right. And 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 that's what I think. If we look back, you know, if we look back thirty years from now, we'll we'll see that like we were still at the early phases of what this of what this was. And I also think that democracy of where people will shop is going to change. And so that, that might hurt Amazon and their market share um, a little bit, but I think that, that people are, um, people have kind of learned from this, you know, that you can't just trust what you see and you need to do a little bit of research. So people are looking around and Amazon might win when they get the shipping and everything else back in order. But like, you know, we went to go order vitamins for our kids and they were five times the cost of being in the store because of somebody arbitraging them online. And, you know, I'm not going to say my wife would have bought them without me, but I definitely put a stop to it knowing that like, that's ridiculous. You know, it's an $8 bottle. I'm not going to pay 35, $40 for it. Right. Right. I mean, but, but look at Amazon, two things like Amazon, as you know, they've, they've acquired a lot of companies and prime example, this is Whole Foods, right? So Amazon right. has stretched into the retail space slash brick and mortar space and they've made Whole Foods products available online, right? They're going to continue to do things like that. And as far as, as far as a retail perspective, I mean, you see a lot of companies filing for bankruptcy right now, but they're filing for bankruptcy under a, a reorganization. They're not going away 100%. Right but they're greatly diminishing their footprint, their physical footprint. They're closing stores or they're just keeping open the ones that are the most profitable, the ones that make financial sense for them. So what does that do for the customer? Well, the customer, instead of being bought, instead of potentially being near uh, three stores is now only near one and that one store may not have the product they want. So then what right. do they do for e-commerce? Right. Yeah, it's definitely. So um, last question I want to ask you, a lot of people want to stay up on the hottest, latest, ways to do things. How do you keep up on the latest trends? Um, are there any, you know, go-to sources, anything like that? So I'll tell you, I'll tell you three things. One, I don't like following specific people for the most part, because I like to get my news like in general and like to see everyone's take on everything. That's number one. Number two, um, in the last two years, I have, I've not left, but I've unsubscribed to the constant feed of Facebook groups. Um, I just feel like there's so much information that's not relevant slash valuable slash correct and i don't i don't feel like that's that's helped my business but what i have done is really placed a large amount of my time focusing on the the feed that comes through my linkedin channel and that's because i think that years over years linkedin has proven itself to be the prime um source of business related information market changes just overall thoughts from thought leaders if you will um, about, you know, what's changing and what's, what's relevant in the market. So I spend a lot of my time on that. I mean, when I wake up in the morning, it's, it's one of the, I don't know, five or 10 apps that I check and go through for five or 10 minutes and just see what's, what's, what's trending. Right. Right. Um, and just, you know, throughout the day I'll do that and, and I'll, I'll get push notifications with, with things that LinkedIn recommends to me. And it's not that I 
me the information, but I go into that and I start reading it and immediately I'm interested and, I feel, and, I, and it, it gets my mind going. Whereas some of the other channels, I haven't felt that before. So I feel like I'm getting a, a, a greater value for my time, if you will. Yeah. And I think it, I think it depends on like what you're trying to accomplish, right? So three years ago, when you were heavy in those Facebook groups, you were looking for, um, you were looking for more community. You might not have been looking for actual knowledge, but you were looking for community. And now over the last three or four years, you've built community. You have kind of your network of people. Um, I think I'm in like three different text chains with you and different people that I would say are part of your community. And I have, you know, other ones like that. And I'm sure you have other ones like that too. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, Facebook is more of the community. And so if you're seeking more of the, who else is out there trying to do what I'm trying to do? Facebook is a great place to be. If you're seeking more of the a uh, little bit more professional, how to grow, how to connect with people, I agree LinkedIn is, 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 is a great channel. Um, and, I, and I ultimately agree with, with I'm going to bring this back to the beginning, which is that when you read things, you can't just freak out. You yeah. have to take it. You have to digest it. You have to understand how it impacts your business. Um, and you can't just take somebody else's, I guess, freak out for lack of a better term and, and, and make it your own. And I don't, I, and I don't think that anyone, no matter what business you're operating in or what model you're practicing should ever turn their back on community. I think community is always, it's like, it's, I credit the community with getting me to where I have, where I'm sitting at right now. Right. Yep. But at some point you've got to figure out what part of the community is helping your business and what part is just fun, a fun aspect slash not, not giving you the boost you need. I mean, it's, it's fine to have a community. It's fine to interact. But at the end of the day, you have a business to run. Like what, what part of it is, is truly valuable to you that's going to make you grow? Great. Well, thank you for being on. Again, uh, in the links below, we have links to Eddie's presentation from Past Resonate, um, talking about logistics and transportation. And um, we'll probably include a couple links to some other webinars that I've done with Eddie because it's also additional great information uh, that you can pick up and you can learn. Um, Eddie is available and his contact information is listed below. You can reach out to him directly. Uh, he loves to talk e-commerce. He loves to talk logistics. He loves to solve problems. Um, and uh, I'm sure he'd be happy um, if you want to reach out. Uh, so his contact information is also below. So thank you, Eddie, and look forward to having you and talking to you again. Thanks for the invite.